Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy, Nermodon, and I'll be doing a gameplay commentary over some Battlefield 4. For this particular episode, I'm going to be speaking on behalf of the tanks of the Battlefield 4 beta. Of course, not everything is issued into the game yet, there's a lot of adjustments that can definitely happen during this period, and I'm sure we'll definitely see a lot over the next year, imaginably. But with that in mind, guys, I'm going to be going over a few characteristics speaking on the behalf of the Type 99 MBT. This tank is actually scattered throughout the map. You guys usually don't have a problem finding it. I know the respawn times for the tanks can be a little bit of a frustration sometimes just depending on you know how much your team is advancing, what kind of objectives needs to be taken, and the push that is required of your official team in order to succeed. That can definitely be frustrating. I've definitely ran into a few moments like that myself, especially in the beta as of the moment. It seems like there's a mixture between veteran players and people that are especially new to the Battlefield franchise, you can definitely tell, or maybe they didn't place as much hours into the Battlefield 3 official game than maybe some of you veterans out there, of course. But anyway, guys, I'm going to go over some of the information for the driver and gunner, just in case you guys haven't played the Battlefield 4 beta yet, or maybe you just haven't had the luxury of finding one of the tanks yet. That's definitely something that can happen if you have teammates that are constantly waiting for it. There's a good chance that you probably haven't had the luxury of uh, jumping in one and uh, smacking some people around. So to go over just some information guys, the driver is actually going to have access to the main gun and the main gun is going to be shooting armored piercing rounds. Now those are really effective against tanks, vehicles or anything like that of course. With that said, they're not going to be as effective against infantry units, you know, people that actually have flesh. It's not going to be something that's going to be greatly effective towards them, but that's not to say that it's not still going to do damage. You can still kill people. You guys will see throughout the video that the main shell that I shoot at the opposition does in some circumstances definitely kill them, but uh, I would definitely say that they were probably injured a little bit as well. The splash damage is not as definitive as it once was, but that's to be expected, of course. So with that said, guys, your secondary is going to be the LMG. It's going to be the standard issue one. It's going to do a sufficient amount of damage. It shoots pretty quickly. And overall, I really enjoy it. I've actually started to really use it a lot more. When I first started, I was like, fuck this thing. This thing's just useless. Because in Battlefield 3, I never really used it a whole lot. It was never something that I found myself needing, you know, the spare millisecond to save my life. Just because with proximity scan and reactive armor... You know, you're pretty much suited up and you're ready for a good heyday. But with the beta here and not everybody having all the uh, nooks and crannies and all the bells and whistles, it's probably in your best interest to uh, get used to using that toggle between them and uh, taking full effect of it considering that it does have unlimited ammunition. Meanwhile, the main cannon unfortunately only has a selected amount and then you have to go through that cycle of reloading it with your crew and that's not very fun. So, as you guys would expect, your countermeasures are going to be the infrared smoke. That's pretty standard. It was the same in Battlefield 3. A lot of people used it. It was a very widely known and used perk. And I would imagine that'll probably be the same because it's pretty hard to uh, definitely get rid of a countermeasure in order to uh, have something else. But we don't know all that information is. Maybe there'll be something that pops up and we're just like, oh, we got to have that. But as for the moment... It looks like infrared smoke is going to be one of the top priorities as of the moment. And it has a really cool animation. So definitely if you get some time, go into that third person and uh, give it a look. But in the optics category, guys, you guys are going to have zoomed optics. It's just going to extend your reach. It's a little different if you're not used to it. You guys will see many times that I undershoot just because I'm you know, not used to using zoomed optics. So I'll definitely have to get used to that. It'll be something that I have to grow accustomed to. And over the years... I imagine I will uh, get a lot better with it, or maybe I'll find something that I enjoy a lot more, maybe like infrared or something like that. But anyway, guys, that's it for that. Of course, we do have the upgrade that you can add to the tank for your physical driver, and I do have the maintenance one selected. That's going to be the beginning one that you guys will have on your vehicle. It's the one that you can configure on day one, even if you are, you know, level zero. So you will have a pretty good arsenal to start things off with. You'll be able to compete with other drivers. There'll be no huge gap between the best and the worst, but, you know, there will be different things that they have that you won't, but you have the main uh, nooks and crannies, the bells and whistles, and you should be able to compete with those guys as well. Now, some of you guys might wonder, what is the gunner seat stuff? This is something kind of new to, you know, how Battlefield 4 is working. I am aware that Battlefield 3 had the ability to use some of the upgrades for the entire vehicle, 
you know, proximity scan being one of them. It was a very widely known thing. I think a lot of people used it, myself included. And if you didn't have it on there, you were kind of wasting your time, especially if you were both running reactive. You only got reactive one time. It didn't counter, you know, carry over, of course. So for the gunner seat, you guys will start off with the standard optics. As you guys would presume, it's going to be the gunner optics or just more of a magnification for the zoom. It's pretty effective considering that when you do have that 50 cal, you want to be able to pinpoint the head or the upper chest. You want to hit those multipliers. Maybe you want to be a little bit more accurate because, you know, unfortunately you do overheat if you just lay down the trigger. Just like in Battlefield 3, it's the same circumstances. So definitely try to uh, pepper that trigger a little bit more. Try to be a little bit more accurate and try to judge, you know, which direction the opponent is going to be strafing or bunny hopping towards whichever uh, way they can find themselves to get out of that circumstance, of course. Now with that said... We do have a gunner upgrade that you guys will have, and it's going to be the standard gunner belt feeder. It's just going to be a lot more effective, especially for getting rounds down range, and that's pretty much about it for that. Of course, you guys will have the ability to earn, you know, your little packages for the battle packs. You can, you know, get some upgrades along the way. You can still upgrade your vehicles by just simply getting kills and being objective-oriented with that vehicle, and you can level up your bar. That'll unlock other things along the way. I'll talk about that maybe in another episode, but of course... As you guys would expect, there are upgrades that are extended after this period, and of course, the stuff with the official final game will also include more information about what we can also uphold in our vehicle. Customizations for, you know, the actual camouflages will come at a later date, considering that the beta only upholds, I think if I'm correct, about 12 or so, and with the final release of the game, there's supposed to be approximately 130 of them, so... I figured that'd be a good opportunity to let you guys know that there are a sufficient more camos that will be added into the final result of the game, but as for the moment, it doesn't look like that is included in this particular package. But anyway guys, that's about it for the information in reference to, you know, the Type 99 um, MBT, and it's a pretty good tank. I would say that it, you know, handles pretty much like the Abrams or maybe just the Russian tank that was in Battlefield 3. You're not going to see a whole lot of differences, top speed and all that. I don't really see anything that's definitive. I don't see anything that's, you know, death defying to the existence of the vehicle. It's still going to be able to absorb a lot of rockets, but, you know, there is not that disable feature anymore. So if you drop below a certain, you know, point, you want to make sure that you're, you know, keeping track of your health because unfortunately you don't go disabled anymore. You don't get a notification saying that you are on fire and if you don't repair the vehicle, there's no luck for you, you know, it's going to blow up. So make sure you're definitely uh, staying tuned in on your uh, information because if you're not, you're going to blow up. And, well, you guys will see a few times that that happened to me. I just kind of forgot about it and I was used to seeing some configurations that popped up saying like, oh, you're on fire, you have no mobility, your tracks are off, you know, all that good stuff. And just take that into consideration, you know, you don't exactly have that luxury anymore of having an alert come up saying that you kind of need to bail or fix the vehicle. Now, with that said, of course, critical hits do affect tanks, maybe not as much as the air vehicles, but they definitely do make an impact on it, and I would definitely recommend to you guys that you spend a little time to understand which one is going to hurt you the most and how to play, especially when you're in critical stage. But anyway, guys, that has been the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanted to talk with you guys about that, and I thought that would be a good video for you guys to understand and watch some gameplay. So this has been NMO, and I'll be signing off, guys. Peace.